Hey everyone, happy Friday. Hope you're having a good day and um, hopefully you have already set up your notebook piece of paper. I left an example with the sub of how to set that up. We are going to be putting this example at the top of that page so as you're going through the scavenger hunt you can look up at the top of your page and use this example to help you out. So we are reviewing angle relationships and we went over these in unit one. We have solved some equations with angle relationships, but I think we might need a review. And the unit that we're heading into, we're going to add some more angle relationships. We're going to be solving some more equations. And so this will be a nice review day to prepare us for that. So I have my steps here that will really work for all the equation or all of the problems in the scavenger hunt. I want you to make sure you do these things and that you have them on your paper um, in each little section for each problem that you're doing. We are going to turn this paper in at the end of the class and what I'm looking for is the equation and your solution, you know, what, what um, value you think the variable is. Of course, to set up the equation, you're going to be identifying the angle relationship, but you don't need to write that down for me. The things I want you to write down are the equation, the solution, and then also we've made that little section for the letter uh, because that's going to help us with the order. So I have a problem here. It's actually like a two-in-one problem. And so for that reason, I'm going to cover up this part of the problem first. And I'm going to work just with my x's. So I have x's and y's, and I actually want to keep the variables together, so I'm not ready to work on the y part yet. So when I look at this diagram, hopefully it looks familiar to you, and what I know is these are what we call vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed where two lines intersect. So I have this line intersecting this line. And then the angles are going to be opposite from each other where the two lines intersect. So these are vertical angles and also these two are vertical angles. And we could go back to our notes in unit one to, you know, check these different angle relationships. But maybe you recall that vertical angles are congruent. So I want to set up my equation to show that congruent angles have equal measure. So I am literally going to take these two expressions and set them equal to each other. Then I'm going to go through solving. This might be the part that we are needing some review on. I have uh, variables on both sides. And so I, you know, really like that tool of drawing the line through the equal sign showing me that I have two different sides here. Um, I know that I'm going to end up combining my like terms, but when I want to take 3x and maybe put it with the 2x over here, I'm crossing this threshold of the middle of the equation, the equal sign. And so when I cross over, I need to do the opposite inverse operations to get, get my like terms combined together. So I am going to subtract 2x from both sides. 2x minus 2x is 0. And then I'm going to end up combining my 2x over here with my 3x. So 3x minus 2x is just x, or 1x. And then I will rewrite the other parts of the equation that I am still working with. Now I'm working to isolate the variable, so I want to get x by itself, and now I need to get my numbers over on the same side together. The opposite of subtracting 33 is adding 33. And I get 38 there equals x, so I know x is equal to 38. Now the angle measure is not equal to 38, but x is equal to to 38. And I could actually take that angle measure and plug it back in to my equation or my expressions here and I can figure out what the angle measure is. I know here I'm going to take 2 times 38 plus 5 and 2 times 38 I get 76 
and then plus 5, that's going to give me 81. So I know this angle right here is 81, and if these are vertical angles, they should be congruent, which is, you know, what I did in my equation. So when I plug in my 38 over here, which is now 3 times 38 minus 33, I should also get 81. And you can just, you know, crunch that in your calculator. 3 times 38 is 114, and then subtract 33, and I get 281 again. So that was good. That checked out, and I got the same angle measure here. So anytime I have vertical angles, I am going to set them equal to each other. That's not how every single problem in the scavenger hunt is going to be solved, but definitely with our vertical angles or any other angles that are congruent. All right, let's get rid of this sticky note. And now we are going to work here. So now I want to tie this angle back to one of these other angles. And what I may notice, or remember it was a second relationship, was, uh, is our linear pair angles. So I see I have a straight line here, and that these two angles form a straight angle, a 180 degree angle. Again, we would call these linear pairs. writing is a bit glitchy right now. And so I know they're going to equal 180. I know that 4y minus 1 plus 81 is going to equal 180. And there I have it. That is my equation whenever I have supplementary angles which equal 180. So now I can go through solving this equation. I got my equal, or my line through my equal sign again, and I notice I don't have variables on both sides this time. But over on this left side, I have some things I can combine together. I can combine that minus 1 with 81 here. So I'm going to do that before I start solving. Just makes the opportunity to make mistakes a little less um, frequent. So I have 4y plus 80 equals 180. And then I'm going to subtract. And I have 4y is equal to 100. And my last step is going to be to divide by 4. And 100 divided by 4, that's like a dollar. And I know there are 4 quarters in a dollar. So I get y is equal to 25. Now I could take that and plug that back in. 4 times 25 minus 1 is what this angle is going to be equal to. So 4 times 25 is where I get my 100, and minus 1, that puts me at 99. So because I said these two angles here, this one, and this one equal 180 together, then 81 plus 99 should also equal 180, which they do indeed equal 180. So those are two different types of setups. Um, we do have one more, which I'm not going to do an example. I'm confident you'll be able to do those problems, but I do want to review the different angle relationships, the possible ones. There's four that are in the scavenger hunt. So I'm going to move forward. If we need to pause the video to get our examples written down, then do that. And I am going to go over the angle relationships that we will see. So I have four here. Two of them we've already talked about. So here, these are our vertical angles again. I have my two lines intersecting, and my angles are opposite or across from each other. These are vertical angles, and they are congruent. When two angles are congruent, I'm going to set them equal to each other in my equations. This next diagram is also what we saw. This is a linear pair. A linear pair is made up of two supplementary angles. 
And we know that supplementary angles are equal to 180. So in my equation, I'm literally going to add them up and set them equal to 180. All right, we have a third type here. These are our angles that these are adding up to 90 here, 59 plus 31. I have my right angle box drawn there, and we know that two angles that add up to 90 are complementary. Okay, complementary angles, they literally add up to 90. So I want to show my, or have my equation reflect that. I want to add them up and set them equal to 90. And then finally on this last example, it might be a little hard to see, but these two angles, they have the same type of angle marks here. They're little red arcs, but I've made some bigger arcs. And whenever I have two angles that have the same markings, I know that those angles are going to be congruent. Congruent angles are equal measure. So if I'm told two angles are congruent or I'm shown it with the arc markings, then I'm going to make sure I set those equal to each other. So just like the vertical angles. So in our scavenger hunt, we're going to see these four different types. Remember that with the scavenger hunt, you are going to end up going in a big loop. So once you finish a problem, you're looking around at the posters for the answer to that problem, and that will tell you which poster you go to next. Make sure you keep track of your letters, your equations, and your solutions, and I'm going to take a look at those when I am back. I hope you have a great class.